are three main different types of anesthetic or anesthesia, the types of anesthesia that are used for C-sections. There's spinal anesthesia, epidural anesthesia, and general anesthesia. Spinal anesthesia is by far the most common. Epi epidural will be second. So let's talk about those first. Basically, spinal anesthesia and epidural anesthesia are both similar in that it's medicine that goes in the back that basically makes you numb from here down below. And that allows us to basically open you up with a scalpel, cut you open, cut the baby out, sew you back up without you having pain. Some people have a little hard time with this because you do have a sensation that someone's touching you. You can feel sort of tugging and pushing, but it doesn't hurt. And that can be a pretty scary feeling for some people, but you have to trust that it's not going to hurt. And one of the things that we always do before we start a C-section is we pinch you with an instrument to make sure that you don't feel it. And as long as you don't feel that, we know that you're not going to feel the knife when that goes through. So don't you worry. We're testing to make sure. So let's talk about spinal anesthesia first. Spinal anesthesia is a very thin needle that goes in the back. It goes over to where the spinal column is and where the spinal fluid is. And it puts medicine into that spinal fluid. Now, the interesting thing is that the way the body is formed, the spinal cord actually ends before the sac ends where the fluid is. So the needle goes in below the level of the spinal cord. So you don't have to worry about the needle hitting the spinal cord because it doesn't exist in the area that we're putting it in. And then a small amount of uh, numbing medicine is put into that fluid around the, that bathes the spinal cord, and that numbs the nerves. They also often will put um, a narcotic in there that will give you long-term pain relief as well, so that the first 12 to 24 hours are very comfortable for you. Uh, that's usually done with the patient sitting up. We ask them to sort of lean over and push their back out like a Halloween cat. That opens the spaces between the bones and makes it easier for the anesthesiologist to place the needle in the right spot. Now, an epidural is a similar concept in that the needle is placed again between the bone, except instead of going all the way into the area where the spinal fluid is, the needle goes just before that area, so it's outside of that sac, and there's more medicine that's put in that moves around and bathes the nerves as they're coming out of the, the um, spinal canal. Uh, and so that will also give you anesthetic. The spinal anesthesia tends to be a little deeper anesthesia, meaning you feel less than the epidural. We mostly use epidurals when you're using an epidural for labor, and then we need to convert that to a C-section. We can give a whole bunch more medicine in there to make you more numb, and that way you don't have to have a second anesthetic. So those are called regional anesthesia. In other words, they numb you from an area down, but they don't put you to sleep or, take, or numb your whole body. Now, what we try to avoid is giving you more medicine during the C-section until the baby's delivered. Once a clamp is placed upon the umbilical cord, then we can give you medicine without that medicine going into the baby's system. And so once the baby's out, if you're having a hard time, maybe you're panicking or you're really nervous, the anesthesiologist can give you medicine in your veins that will help calm you down and relax you. The disadvantage is some of those medicines make you forget what happened during the C-section, which for some people can be good, but it may mean that you forget seeing your baby right away. Uh, but of course, that baby's going to be around for a long time. And, uh, but, you know, it's nice to have memories of those first uh, precious few minutes. Now, the last type of anesthesia is general anesthesia, and that's where you're put to sleep completely. And we tend to only do that for big emergencies where we don't have time for a spinal or an epidural, and we need to get that baby out immediately because we can put you to sleep very quickly and get the surgery accomplished and get the baby delivered. And so if there's a situation where we're worried that damage is happening to the baby right now or imminently, then we'll put you to sleep to get that baby out as quickly as possible. The other reason that we would use it is in circumstances where, for one reason or another, we are not able to get a spinal or an epidural to work. In that case, a general anesthetic is necessary. The way general anesthesia happens is first they give medicine through your IV, and that medicine puts you to sleep. Then they put a tube down your throat, uh, and that tube breathes for you, um, and also gives you gas that helps keep you asleep. They have sophisticated monitoring systems that make sure that you're not feeling anything even when you're asleep. So you don't have to worry that you're just paralyzed but still feeling everything. We're able to tell that that's not the case. So those are the types of anesthesia that we use for C-sections. MedTwice.com